Hey guys, it seems that a lot of you have been interested in the RTX 3000 mobile series graphics cards and of course those are going to be paired with Intel's 10th and 11th gen processors, but perhaps most importantly with AMD's Ryzen 5000 mobile series of CPUs and I've already done, I believe, three videos on those things, either way you're going to find them in the video description, but today we're going to be talking about some new things that we've learned about them, so I'm not necessarily going to go through the things that I've already discussed in my videos, if you'd like you can go and watch those, and of course consider getting subscribed because I'm going to be putting out more content relating to those uh, laptops and of course gaming and technology as I do on my channel, so if you'd like to keep yourself up to date then definitely get subscribed. Now we have seen that in Ada 64 they have this has been added support now for the upcoming RTX 30 series mobile graphics cards but surprisingly the RTX 3050 and the RTX 3060 desktop graphics cards were also on that list and of course, uh, like I was saying, I talked about these graphics cards in another video, so you can definitely go and check those out as well because they're definitely interesting and if you are on a budget, I think you might want to have a look at them. Now, focusing on the RTX 30 series mobile graphics cards, it appears that the RTX 3080 mobile is not yet on that list, which might not mean much at the moment, but I'd definitely be curious to um, see if there might potentially be that laptops featuring this mobile GPU might actually take longer to come out. Remember that the RTX 3000 mobile uh, GPUs will be um, coming out well, theoretically in January or February, uh, right after CES 2021 from MSI and ASUS, as I mentioned in one of my um, previous videos with other manufacturers coming out a little bit later with models. Um, now you can also see that speaking of the configurations, the RTX 3070 mobile seems to come in three different variants, those being the RTX 3070 mobile, the RTX 3070 mobile 16 gig, and the RTX 3070 mobile max Q. Now, if you remember, the pricing for those laptops uh, was anywhere between $999 to $2,000, and of course, we've seen them um, theoretically going out for a higher price, but not yet on the Dutch um, website, Azerty. Um, but of course that's not only for the RTX 30 series uh, 3070 mobile graphics cards, this was for the 3060 mobile, for the 37 and the 3080 mobile, that was a top of the line. Now for the RTX 3070 Max-Q, if you know, um, Nvidia is not putting that much, well, yeah of course they're, they're putting focus in it, but it, it sure seems that there are always um, one low, one level lower than they are supposed to be, so the RTX 3070 Max-Q would be more similar to a desktop 3060, but this time around, it, we're, and we're going to get into some benchmarks, it seems that it might even be a little bit lower than that, and of course if you don't know what the Max-Q is, this is their whole uh, shtick, uh, <laughs> that, which makes it so that uh, they can make thinner laptops and they have a lower TGP and lower performance in this case, but they still get to the title of an RTX uh, 3070 in this case, although it's very different from the RTX 3070 that you would have on a desktop, in a desktop, and of course I have an RTX 3070 in my PC video and that is on my channel already. Now let's uh, look at some benchmarks as I was uh, talking about because speaking of the performance I'd expect them to be similar like I was saying to the lower level desktop cards so if you'd have an RTX 3070 mobile that would be more similar to an RTX 3060 or 3060 Ti depending on the scenarios but we've seen that the RTX 3070 mobile has been spotted in a V-Ray RTX benchmarks and of course this is only a productivity benchmark not a gaming uh, benchmark, so don't extrapolate their results one-to-one -one because it most certainly doesn't work like that always. I mean, you might get lucky in some cases, but strictly looking at them, if you are to work with such a tool, then you might actually be happy to hear that the RTX 3070 mobile GPU has managed to score close to 1400 points in V-Ray, which puts it roughly 88% behind the RTX 3060 Ti, but quite similar in performance to the RTX 2080 Ti. And I'm talking about the desktop version of the RTX 2080 Ti, not that there would be <clears throat> Not that there would be a mobile version of the RTX 2080 Ti, at least I don't remember that. Um, 
So if you are a person that works with these kinds of productivity tools and you worked with um, ray tracing scenarios a lot, then this looks like a good deal. Um, especially if it's going to be the 16 gig version and if it's going to come in at a nice price. Well, we don't know all that much about pricing just yet, but perhaps something equally interesting is um, to note that the RTX 3080 Mobile seems to feature the GA104 chip instead of the GA102 chip that uh, we've seen it having it on the actual RTX 3080 desktop um, version. So the GA104 chip is the one that we've seen on the um, RTX 3070 and 3060 Ti graphics cards on desktop. So that's a little bit curious to see what AMD is doing, uh, what Nvidia is doing. Well, I don't know how I got AMD in, in that sentence. Um, but it's also worth noting that the mobile version of the RTX 3080 um, is also going to have only 5,888 CUDA cores much like uh, you see on the RTX 3070 desktop version and it is possible that we won't see that very same great performance on the laptops and I don't know what I was expecting initially but it sure seems that it also combined with lower TGP I believe it's something around 110 to 150 watts you're definitely not going to get anywhere close to the performance of an RTX 3080 desktop graphics cards but still it will it will be a compelling graphics card uh, and of course a good uh, mobile I, I would expect I'm, I'm not sure about that but <laughs> speaking of those things and ray tracing now I reminded myself a bit of the whole um, debacle that is going on between Nvidia and hardware and box and of course shame on you Nvidia for doing all of those things and it seems kind of funny that we're talking about ray tracing performance as you know um, Nvidia and us gamers would like to hear more about of course if you don't know what I'm talking about then I will link a post to the original hardware unboxed I believe uh, I don't think the video is out yet but they they clearly uh, posted a tweet and had a YouTube post about it so if you're not caught up then definitely go and have a look at that as well now sticking back to or going back to laptops um, perhaps super good to know is that we've seen Asus get their certification for the they, for their um, Zephyrus Duo 15 SE featuring Intel's 11370H processor which I've of course talked about in one of my previous videos and this one seems to have a base clock frequency of 3.3 gigahertz in a boost of 4.8 gigahertz and I've previously covered um, those laptops like I was saying but they were from Gigabyte at that time that featured the very same CPU um, as for the ASUS laptop, it seems like these aren't the 45 watt variants since those might only come out in the second quarter of 2021. So if you want to have the beefier version of this CPU, then you might have to wait a little bit longer. I'm personally glad that these certifications are of course taking place right now as this means that we might eventually see them come out sooner and, and I don't mean sooner than CES because that would be kind of weird because I expected them to announce them at CES but it means that um, ASUS and MSI as we've seen previously from a leak from WCCF Tech um, we might see them come out in, in like right after CES in January or February so if you have the money or you're saving up to get a new laptop then these might be interesting but I do expect that well not most people, but a lot of gamers or people who want to game on their uh, laptops and of course need to do some productivity work as well might go with the Ryzen 5000 plus NVIDIA RTX 3000 um, combination in this case because yeah, it sucks what's going on with NVIDIA at this time and uh, <laughs> it, it, it's like kind of the whole combination with AMD and AMD might also work because they're also releasing their whole uh, 6000M series of graphics cards and they're going to of course pair it with the 5000 mobile series of CPUs but as far as I know uh, in terms of productivity it's better to go with AMD and Nvidia but of course this highly depends on the kind of work that you're doing and feel free to uh, leave a comment telling me how wrong I am in, <laughs> in this case and we can of course discuss about that so this would be pretty much for uh, today's video I don't have a lot more information about um, the upcoming laptops at the moment but be sure that um, as soon as I found more information uh, as soon as I find more information about them I'm going to let you know through a video either way I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one
Bye.